guys, so for today's video I am going to be telling you guys all about what I wish I knew before college and before freshman year specifically. So before we get into this video, don't forget to stop what you're doing and subscribe to join the family and don't forget to turn on that bell so that you know whenever I upload. So let's just get right on into this video. So the first thing that I wish I knew before college is that there is going to be a pretty lengthy adjustment period. So this could go both ways. This could end up being good. This could end up being bad. It could be a mixture of both, but you're basically packing up your life. You're going to a new place. You're probably going to meet new people. It's a new experience. It's harder work. It's different types of assignments. You're paying for your education. It's a lot to take in, like especially if you're leaving and going to for your university. You're in a new place. You're on your own, you have to learn how to provide for yourself and take care of yourself. Sometimes it can feel a little lonely because you're going from your house and where you're comfortable to a whole new environment, whole new place, all new people, or at least majority new people. <laughs> and it's, it's just, there's going to be an adjustment period. Anytime you move or make a huge life change or go to a new place, you're going to have some adjustments to make. Whether that's the people you're around, whether that's your job, whether that's your education, you know. So just brace yourself because there is going to be a big adjustment period. Period. If you're having a hard time with it, just know it's okay. You're not alone. Other people are going through that same adjustment period as you are. Okay, so the next thing is if you are living on campus, I highly, highly, highly recommend you keep your door open. I actually did know this, but I know that not everyone will because my dorm didn't have air conditioning. Our RA always recommended we leave our doors open, especially the first few weeks because it was still hot. So we were all getting to know each other. We would stop in, say hey. And that's another thing you should know is that it's okay to randomly say hi to people living in your dorms, in the dining halls, in your classes, like make friends with people because especially the first few weeks of school, it's a new place, new people. You, The only way you're ever going to make friends and get to know people is if you go out of your way to make that effort to get to know people and to make friends. Keeping your door open is a huge way to get to know your floor mates, to be open with them, to make new friends, and it's just a very simple thing you can do. You can just study and leave your door open and some, some people stop by and they say hi and you maybe you'll meet your best friend, you never know. That's how I met Jordan, who I'm living with this year, so I highly recommend leaving your door open. So the next thing is that I wish I knew is that it's okay to say no. Now this could be to drinking, this could be to drugs, this could be to sexual intercourse, this could be to going out and partying in general. It's okay to not go out all the time. It's okay to know when you need to stay in and study if you have a big exam coming up. Like it's okay. You don't always have to be going out and doing things. I know FOMO is a thing, especially in college when all of your friends are going out and you just need to stay in and study for the test tip tomorrow. It's okay to say no and to stay in and do your work and be a good college student. However, on the other end of the spectrum, it is okay to go out. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to go out of your comfort zone and try something new. However, just make sure if you're not being pressured into it. Make sure you're going out of your comfort zone because you want to push yourself, because you want to try something new. You want to do something crazy. I wish I knew both ends of those spectrums, which I do now, but <laughs> it's okay to say no and stay in every once in a while, but it's also okay to go out and have fun because a social life is a huge part of college. And honestly, if all you do is study all the time, it's going to get really boring. It's going to get really sad and lonely and so going out can offer that balance but you just gotta find that balance which brings me into my next thing that I wish I knew. Time management is probably the number one skill you need to have for college because you are juggling so much. You're juggling hanging out with friends, you're juggling classes, homework, studying for exams, going to the gym, if you're in a club or if you're in Greek life, you're meeting with an advisor. There's a lot that goes into college. <laughs> and there's a lot of things you're gonna be doing, so most likely you're going to be very busy. I was lucky and I went in having time management skills, however, pff, let me tell you, I developed more in school because it's absolutely insane. The amount of things you're juggling and doing in one day, you're like on the run, on the go, all the time, <laughs> and it's great but it's also kind of stressful. So that is my another tip, is to set time aside to just relax. 
when you're on the go for so long and doing so many things, sometimes it can get very stressful, sometimes it can get overwhelming, so it's really important to take that time to relax. And that's where time management also comes in handy because you will be able to schedule in that time. Now whatever that is for you. For me, exercising is my relaxation because it, I, I don't know, it's something about exercising, it releases endorphins, it gets out my stress, it makes me feel better. So schedule time for things that you enjoy and things that make you happy and make you feel okay. So the next thing is, I mentioned this in my college experience video, I'll have it linked in the card above, but it is to go well, actually two things. One, use ratemyprofessor.com if you want a good idea of whether you're going to be using a textbook, what their attendance policy is, just all that fun stuff. Rate My Professor is a huge resource to use. I did hear about that before school, but I didn't really use it. And when you're registering for classes, I highly recommend you use it, like 100%. And then go to your professor's office hours, get to know them, use their resources, talk to them, make relationships with them, because they're the ones who are going to be helping you get internships. They're the ones giving you your grades, so you kind of want to make friends with them not even friends just make a relationship with them where if you're really sick they're not gonna like fail you because you missed one class you know so it's good to have that relationship with your professors they're not as scary as you think so my English professor I English has always been my strongest probably academic class until my fall semester of my freshman year that's the only class on my transcript as of today that I have a B in. I have straight A transcript except for one A minus in advertising and one B plus in English. So English, which I thought was my strongest skill, it turned out to be my weakest skill just because the class was very, very difficult. However, I did go to her office hours and get help. She ended up raising two of my grades. So it can make a huge difference when you put in the extra work and you put in the effort to show the professor that you want to succeed in that class and you want to do well. Okay, so this one was just for me personally. I had no idea how stressed out I would be during finals. Now, I have anxiety. I get stressed out very easily. I get stressed out a lot over every single exam the first semester I was freaking out about, but finals week was a entire new level. I was not expecting it to have me as stressed out as I am. I'm just going to give you all that warning. It depends on the kind of person you are. If you're a really good test taker and you're the person who takes tests and gets A's without even studying, good for you. I wish I was that kind of person, but I actually have to work my butt off to get good grades. Honestly, I think the number one reason why I get so stressed out about exams and finals is because I want to do well. I want to get good grades. I want to succeed. So I put that extra pressure on myself to do good and I think of the thoughts like, oh my god, if I fail this, I'm a failure in life. And that's not true at all. And that's another lesson. I didn't learn this until second semester. I wish I knew this. Is that you're most likely gonna fail. And whether that's like one quiz or one exam or a class, like it's probably going to happen. College is hard. College is a learning experience and it's a lot. <laughs> so failure is inevitable, but it's important you take that failure and you will learn from it and you always work to improve and better yourself from it. College is so expensive, so that's another reason why I put so much pressure on myself to do well because I know how much money it is and how much money is going into me getting my diploma. So I want to do everything in my power to ensure that I do that at the best and highest level and grade point average that I can. <laughs> so that is why I think finals week stress me out so much. So if you're like that, or if you have those same thoughts and stuff, just know it is stressful, but you can get through it. So the next thing is it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to not know what you want to do at all. It's okay to go in thinking you want one thing and then coming out wanting something completely different. That's what college is for. College is for you to go and to experience and take the classes and find out if that's really what you're interested in and if that's what you want to pursue. It's really all about learning about yourself and you can't learn about yourself without trying different things. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it around these three because I've said them before in a video, just watch that video if you want me to get more into detail. 8 a.m. suck if you're not a morning person, don't take them. I know you think you might be able to, but they suck. They, it's, I don't know what it is about them when you get up and you're at school at 7.25 every single day for four years and then you go to college and you can't even get up for an 8 a.m. I don't know what how it happens, I don't know why it is, but don't do it unless you're a morning person. Registering for classes is the Hunger Games. I cried both times I registered for classes and it's a nightmare, but you'll get into your classes. Use your professors, email them if you need really need to get into a class, like communicate with 
the people that you're trying to get into their classes with. Really stressful, especially when a freshman because you don't have that many credits, so you're on the lower bar of registration and you get the last times to register, so it's literal Hunger Games. And your syllabus is your lifeline. <laughs> Most times if you ask your professor a question, they're gonna say, check the syllabus. <laughs> Just go look at your syllabus. So what I like to do is I like to print out all of my syllabuses and put them in the folders for each class so I can refer back to them. A lot of times the professors will refer back to the syllabuses and say, in your syllabus it'll say this. Sometimes they remind you about assignments due, sometimes they don't, you never know. So your syllabus is your lifeline. I like to go through each individual class and write with a red pen all of my deadlines. So if I have a huge paper due, I'll write that deadline. And the red pen is actually erasable, so if the deadline changes, you can change it too. That is something I wish I knew, is that syllabuses are your lifeline but they also will change. There was one time my EMF professor pushed back a paper because a lot of people were struggling with it because we didn't get instructions for it in time. Just know syllabuses are your lifeline but they can also change. That is something that really took me by surprise because I was told that syllabuses are set in stone but that's really not the truth. It's all up to the professor. Alright guys so well that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment below any video requests. Congratulations to this person for being the this video shout out thank you for supporting me don't forget to stop shooting and subscribe to join the family and i will see you guys in my next video love you bye Mwah.